Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 13.3, sum and difference of angles identities. Starting things with the sum identities, here are the sum identities. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, when we use the sum identities that we are adding in the trig function. We are adding in the trig function, and these identities is what we would use. Now the difference, the difference identities we are subtracting in the trig functions. That's why we are using the difference identities. Now for these identities, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be using certain degree measures. We have to use these degree measures because we will find out on the next slide what they give us. So, how do we use those degree measures? If we were have or if we had 0 degrees, if we had sine of 0 degrees, that is just 0. However, cosine of 0 degrees is 1. Well, let's jump to 30. What would 30 degrees look like? Sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, while cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. Or say we use 135 degrees. Sine of 135 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2, while cosine of 135 degrees is negative square root 2 over 2. So, what do some of these problems look like? For number one, we are asked to find the exact value of each expression using these degree measures, ladies and gentlemen. We have to use those degrees. With number one, we are asked to find sine of 75 while well, using what numbers here can get us to 75. That is going to be 30 plus 45 get us to 75. Together they add up to 75. So since we are adding some numbers together, we are going to be using the sum identity of sine. So let's go ahead and write this bad boy out. We have sine of 30 plus 45. That's going to equal sine now of your first number, first letter. So it's going to be sine of 30 times cosine of 45. Then we have plus cosine of A again, which is 30 times sine of 45. Now let's go ahead and change these into our measures. So on the last slide, sine of 30 degrees was 1 half. We're going to take that times cosine of 45 degrees was the square root of 2 over 2. Then we have plus the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2 times the sine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you are using your last slide to get this. Now, let's multiply these together. When we multiply, we multiply across the top and across the bottom. So we have the square root of 2 over 4 plus across the top and across the bottom the square root of 6 over 4. Same denominator, so it's just going to be the square root of 2 plus the square root of 6 all over 4. So the sine of 75 degrees, after we find the exact value for the expression, is going to be the square root of 2 plus square root of 6 all over 4. Let's try another one here where it is cosine of negative 75. Well, how do we get negative 75? What can we subtract of these degree measures to get us negative 75? Well, I'm using cosine, and I'm going to try 45 degrees minus 120. Does that give me 75 degrees or negative 75 degrees? Yes, it does. So now I'm going to be using the difference identity of cosine. So let's try it. We have cosine here, and then it's 45 minus 120. 20. That's going to equal cosine of A, or the first one, cosine of 45. We're going to take that times cosine of just of 120, not a negative 120, just 120, plus, now we move to sine, sine of 45 
times sine of 120. Now using your previous slide, cosine of 45 turns into the square root of 2 over 2 times cosine of 120 turns into a negative 1 half plus sine of 45 turns into the square root of 2 over 2 and the sine of 120 turns into the square root of 3 over 2. Let's simplify this stuff. Remember when we multiply, we multiply across the top and we multiply across the bottom. So we have a negative square root 2 over 4 plus. Now we multiply what's inside those square roots, so it's going to be the square root 6 over 4. Combining like terms, we have the square or a negative square root 2 plus square root 6 all over 4 to be our simplified exact value of cosine of negative 75. So this would be our answer for number 2. Let's try a couple more. Now, everybody's favorite, we are going to verify that each equation is an identity. So with this cosine here, we are subtracting. So we are going to use the difference identity of cosine, which is given to us right here. How do we use that? Ladies and gentlemen, just working with this, see if we can come up with cosine theta. So let's try it. I'm going to take that cosine and make it go to everything inside here. So it's going to be the cosine of 360 degrees times cosine of theta. We do not know what that theta is, so we can't really touch that, plus sine of 360 degrees times sine of theta. That's going to equal cosine theta. Let's just lock this guy in right now. Now with a little help from our calculator, you plug cosine 360 into your calculator, we come up with 1. We do not know what that theta is, so we have to just leave it cosine theta. Then we punch in sine 360 into our calculator, so it's going to be plus sine 360 turns into a big fat 0, and then we take that times sine theta. That's still equaling our locked in number, which is cosine theta. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this times this turns into a zero. Zero plus anything stays itself, so we have one cosine theta equals, you guessed it, ladies and gentlemen, cosine theta. We came up with the exact same thing, so we just verified that the equation is an identity. Let's try for four. Now with four, we have a pi. With the pi, we have to go back to our quadrants. What is pi on the quadrant? Well, hopefully we have it written down that pi is 180 degrees. So instead of working with pi, let's work with 180 degrees. So let's go ahead and distribute that cosine. Cosine of 180 degrees, still using this guy because we're subtracting, times cosine of theta plus sine of 180 degrees times sine of theta. That equals now a negative cosine theta. Keep rocking. Let's punch, punch, punch into your calculator. This guy is going to turn into now a negative 1. We keep cosine theta. Anytime with a theta in there, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to stay a theta. Then it's going to be plus sine of 180. Punch, punch, punch into your calculator. That is 0 times sine theta equaling stays the same there. Now, what's that turn into? Zero times anything is zero. 
this turns into zero. So I'm going to rewrite it just so we can see it this time. Negative one cosine theta plus zero, that's a zero, equals a negative cosine theta. Keep going, we have a negative cosine theta because I just dropped off the one, that's all I did. That equals a negative cosine theta as well. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen, we just verified it. You verified it showing this work right here, and that is why you show your work. And that does it, ladies and gentlemen, for section 13.3, sum and difference of angles identities. Good day.